हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द अनदर इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन ऑफ ई पाठशाला टुडे आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग द मॉड्यूल एंड द नेम ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इज महात्मा गांधी एंड नॉन वायलेंट रेवोल्यूशन माय नेम इज डॉक्टर मोनिका सोनी आई एम फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पॉलिटिकल साइंस जी जी डी एस टी कॉलेज सेक्टर थर्टी टू चंडीगढ़ महात्मा गांधी हु इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मोहनदास करमचंद गांधी was born on 2nd october 1869 he gave the theory of non violence or ahimsa which means lack of desire to harm or kill ahimsa parmo dharm has always been a hallmark of india's ancient culture but this notion has got a new meaning with gandhi friends gandhi was an ardent supporter of this theory of non violence and he practiced this theory from his early youth days till the end of his life it is actually a search for truth for him he based he believed that it is much more effective and stronger than violence he based his theory on the four pillars sarvodaya swaraj swadeshi and satyagraha sarvodaya it's the core pillar it says that this whole world is one family this whole earth is actually one family and it is always interdependent and interconnected swaraj it means self organization and self rule and it gives maximum power to the people swadeshi it is based on people centered economies satyagraha it is a mental weapon it's a moral weapon and it is the weapon of those who are strong from their spirit it is actually a mental training and it is based on truth non violence and tapasya friends gandhi ji always believed that today's parliamentary democracies cannot function till they adopt the practice of non violence if they will be successful if they serve all and they protect the weak now if we talk about the application of gandhian notion of non violence we see that some of the critics says that it is fine applicable in india only but friends this is not the case as we have seen that it is applicable in in many parts of the country in in an in in many parts of the world like we have seen its applicability in america in poland philippines czechoslovakia el salvador guatemala and norway etc some of the thinkers have criticized the concept on the basis that it is false racist inferior and sometimes dangerous too Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born in the town of Porbandar in the state of Gujarat on 2nd October 1869 known for his ascetic lifestyle he inspired many people around the world he faced jail terms during the journey of the freedom of india Finally this legendary figure and the great fundamentalist laid to rest on 30th January 1948 but his principle of self discipline non violence ahimsa satyagraha kept inspiring future generations ever after his departure to heavenly abode non violent revolution or ahimsa an introduction non violence is a weapon of the great leaders it's the simplest method of persuasion non violence has divine qualities that take us near to god so everyone should know non violence and why non violence is necessary non violence guarantees freedom of conscience and people are free to base their behavior on their deeper conviction meaning of non violent evolution or ahimsa the literal meaning of non violence means not to be violent in action one should not kill humans and the wilds one should not hurt them in any manner 
non violence has been taken from the sanskrit word ahimsa which refers to lack of desire to harm or kill is the personal practice of being harmless with self and with others under every condition non violence is not to be used ever as the shield of the coward it's the weapon of the brave mahatma gandhi historical background of non violence or ahimsa ahimsa is considered is the highest duty and accepted norm in hinduism jainism and many other religious traditions in ancient india people exclusively used to abide by the principle of ahimsa parmo dharma in practicality and had a pragmatic approach to this principle it is a noble device of the greats to pacify stormy situations and has been in practice since ages mahavir jain gautam buddha mahatma gandhi ashok and leo tolstoy have been the chief exponents of non violence gandhian concept and philosophy of non violence with gandhi the notion of non violence attained a special status mahatma gandhi is also an ardent supporter of non violence he practiced non violence right from his youth and preached the same worldwide he said it is the weapon of strong and brave by strong people he meant those who are morally and spiritually strong he said that non violence is much effective and stronger than violence gandhi's non violence is the search for truth truth is the most fundamental aspect in gandhi's philosophy of non violence in the book experiments with truth a compilation of his pursuit of truth that gandhi discovered the principle of non violence which he further explained in his autobiography ahimsa is the basis of the search for truth i am realizing that this search is vain unless it is founded on ahimsa as the basis gandhi was the first in human history to extend the principle of non violence from the individual to social and political plane gandhi identified two forms of violence passive and physical the practice of passive violence is a daily affair consciously and unconsciously it is again the fuel that ignites the fire of physical violence gandhi understands violence from its sanskrit root himsa which means injury in the midst of hyper violence gandhi teaches that the one who possesses non violence is blessed blessed is the man who can perceive the law of ahimsa in the midst of raging fire of himsa all around him gandhi objects to violence because it perpetuates hatred when it appears to do good the good is only temporary and cannot do any good in the long run a true non violence activist accepts violence on himself without inflicting it on other leading towards heroism when gandhi says that in the course of fighting for human rights one should accept non violence and self suffering he does not applaud cowardice there is a need for a perfect weapon to combat violence and this is non violence gandhi understood non violence from its sanskrit root ahimsa is just translated to mean non violence in english but it implies more than just avoidance of physical violence ahimsa implies total non violence no physical violence and no passive violence gandhi translate ahimsa as love for gandhi non violence is the greatest force at the disposal of mankind it is mightier than weapon of mass destruction it is superior to brute force for non violence to be strong and effective it must begin with mind without which it will be non violence of the weak and the coward gandhi stressed this when he says quote i can imagine a fully armed man to be at least a coward possession of arms implies an element of fear if not cowardice but true non violence is impossibility without the possession of unadulterated fearlessness unquote as the world's pioneer in non violent theory and practice gandhi states that non violence contained a universal applicability in this passage 
Gandhi promises deliverance through non-violence for the oppressed people without exception. Speaking primarily with regards to non-violence as a laboratory philosophy in this passage, Gandhi emphasizes the power of non-violence to emancipate spiritually and physically. It is a science of its own which can lead to pure democracy. Satyagraha is the source of Gandhism. Though Gandhi introduced a new spirit to the world and it is his greatest contribution to the world. Gandhian non-violence is a combination of constructive base building programs and satyagraha often interpreted in the global north as a form of spiritual direct action. He first use of civil disobedience on a mass scale began in September 1906 when the Transvaal government wanted to register the entire Indian population and passed what the Indians called the Black Act. In response, they held a mass meeting in the Imperial Theatre of Johannesburg. Some were so angry at the humiliating ordinance that they threatened a violent response if put to the test. With Gandhi's advice, they all decided as a group to refuse to comply with the registration provision. Gandhi decided to call this technique of refusing to submit to injustice Satyagraha. The philosophy of non-violence that has been developed through much of the 20th century has made an indispensable contribution to all theories of legitimate revolutionary social change. Gandhi himself has said that if one lacked the courage to fight injustice through non-violent means, then one should pick up a gun. He affirms that non-violence is the activation in us of that true courage, honor, faithfulness, integrity and loyalty to truth and justice. Gandhi understood that a non-violent world order is not only a spiritual commitment on the part of persons everywhere but must institutionalized both politically and economically in the form of democratic world government, federated democratic government at all levels of governing. Gandhi made clear if we want real democracy on earth and real economic justice and prosperity on earth we will have to institutionalize non-violence. With the today's system of militarized sovereign nations, state and vast disparities between extreme wealth and extreme poverty, we have pervasive institutionalized violence. This violence requires the military to enforce its global system of injustice and exploitation. Four pillars of ahimsa or non-violent revolution. Gandhi offers four pillars for the sustenance of ahimsa, Sarvodaya, Swaraj, Swadeshi and Satyagraha. Sarvodaya, this is the core among these pillars, that is the practice of economic, political and moral justice for all. It is based on the idea that earth is having sufficient to satisfy the need of all, but when it comes to satisfying the greed of a single man, it complains of paucity. Swaraj. Gandhi's idea of self-rule celebrates the freedom born of the self-discipline necessary for Sarvodaya. Swaraj demands maximum power for self-organization and self-rule by people within their families, neighborhoods, villages and bioregions. We assume full responsibility for our own behavior and for our decisions made with others and how to organize our communities. Swaraj celebrates personal freedom from poverty and all forms of domination. Swadeshi At the heart of Swadeshi is honoring and celebrating local economy with people enjoying a right livelihood from the gifts of the natural resources. Swadeshi is people centered economies. The soul of small is beautiful. Satyagraha Satyagraha pronounced Satyagraha is a compound of two Sanskrit nouns Satya meaning truth and Agraha meaning firm grasping. Satyagraha means truth force, soul force and or as Martin Luther Jr. would call it love in action. Satyagraha has often been defined as the philosophy of non-violent resistance most prominently employed by Mahatma Gandhi in forcing an end to the British domination. 
Gandhi's view of Satyagraha. Satyagraha was most was not a preconceived plan for Gandhi. Even in his life, culminating in his Brahmacharya vow, prepared him for it. Satyagraha is a moral weapon, and the stress is on the soul force over the physical force. It aims at winning the enemy through love and patient suffering. It deals with an unjust law, not by crushing, preventing, or taking revenge against the authority by adopting coercive measures. but to convert and heal it satyagraha is ornament of those people strong in spirit a person not having doubts regarding his convictions or a timid person cannot do it satyagraha teaches the art of living as well as dying love and unshakable that is firmness are its indistinguishable constituents it is uniformly applicable to all irrespective of age and sex The most important training in Satyagraha is mental, not physical. The concept of Satyagraha has some basic precepts which are being treated below. The basic precept of Satyagraha. There are three basic precepts essential to Satyagraha: truth, non-violence, and self-suffering. These are called the pillars and foundation of Satyagraha. Failure to grasp them is a handicap and creates penumbra to the understanding of Gandhi's non-violence. these three fundamentals correspond to sanskrit terms satya truth implying openness honesty and fairness ahimsa or non violence means refusal injury upon others tapasya willingness to self sacrifice satya or truth satyagraha as stated above in its etymological sense means truth force truth is relative term knowing the absolute truth is beyond the reach and capabilities of a common satyagraha is a device and a mode working steadily towards a discovery of the absolute truth and converting the opponent into a friend in the working process gandhi made in his life a numerous experiments with truth in holding to the truth he claims to be making a ceaseless effort to find it gandhi's conception of truth is deeply rooted in hinduism reaching pure and absolute truth is attaining moksha gandhi holds that truth is god and maintains that it is an integral part of satyagraha ahimsa in gandhi's satyagraha truth is inseparable from ahimsa the negative prefix a plus himsa meaning injury make up the word normally translated non violence The term ahimsa appears in Hindu teachings as early as Chandogya Upanishad. The Jain religion constitutes ahimsa as the first vow. It is cardinal virtue in Buddhism. Despite its being rooted in these religions, the special contribution of Gandhi was to make the concept of ahimsa meaningful in the social and political spheres by molding tools for non-violent action is to use as a positive source. in the search for social and political truths gandhi formed ahimsa into the active social technique which was to challenge political authorities and religious orthodoxy it is worth noting that this active social technique which was to challenge political authorities used by gandhi is none other than satyagraha truly enough the indian milieu was already infused with the notions of him ahimsa nevertheless Gandhi acknowledged that it was an essential part of his experiments with the truth whose technique of action he called satyagraha at the root of satya and ahimsa is love while making discourses on the bhagavad gita an author says truth peace righteousness and non violence satya shanti dharma and ahimsa they are interrelated with each other and are essentially dependent on love when love enters the thoughts it becomes truth when it magnifies itself in the form of action it becomes truth when love manifests itself in the form of action it becomes dharma or righteousness when your feelings become saturated with love it becomes peace itself the very meaning of the word peace is love when you feel your understanding with love it is ahimsa practice love is dharma thinking of love is satya feeling love is shanti and understanding love is ahimsa 
for all these values it is love which flows as the undercurrent tapasya or self suffering it remains a truism that the classical yogic laws of self restraint and self discipline are familiar elements and engrossed within indian culture self suffering in satyagraha is a test of love gandhi distinguished self suffering from cowardice gandhi's choice of self suffering does not mean that he undermined the value life it is rather a sign of voluntary help and it is noble spiritually and morally enriching satyagraha is at its best when preached and practiced by those who would use arms but doesn't desire to invite suffering upon them it is not easy for a western mind or a non oriented philosopher to understand this issue of self suffering in fact in satyagraha the element of self suffering is perhaps the least acceptable to the western mind yet such sacrifice may well provide the ultimate means of realizing that characteristics so eminent in christian religion and western modern philosophy the dignity of the individual the three elements satya ahimsa tapasya must move together for the success of any satyagrah campaign satyagrah in action for satyagrah to be valid it has to be tested when the principles are applied disobedience non cooperation non violent strike and constructive actions are cherished south africa and india yeah, were laboratories where gandhi tested his techniques for campaign against social maladies qualities of a satyagrahi a satyagrahi should have a living and faith in god for him is his only rock one must believe in truth and non violence as one's creed and therefore have faith in the inherent goodness of human nature one must live a chaste life and be ready and willing for the sake of one's cause to make sacrifice his life and his belongings one must be free from the use of any intoxicant in order that his reason may be undivided and his mind remains actively recipient one must follow from the core of one's heart all the rules of discipline as may be laid down time to time one should abide by the jail rules unless they hurt one's self respect a satyagrahi must accept to suffer for a good cause that is in order to correct a situation concisely satyagraha is itself a movement intended to fight against social menaces and promote ethical values in the society the satyagrahi also engages in the act of voluntary self mobilize in order to mobilize the opinion of the other side any violence inflicted by the opponent is gracefully accepted without retaliation non violence in democracy mahatma gandhi has deep faith in non violence and was and was of the opinion that all men made institution are not free from risk particularly a state like institution he believed that in a state especially democracy can be survived only on the basis of non violence it cannot be evolved into its form until and unless it falls completely under the preview of non violence however gandhi himself was not sure about it he admitted quote i am making efforts in this direction unquote for him the correct approach was to improve the working of the contemporary democracy and to survive towards the goal making sure that justice and freedom are availed of universally by all only then the true form of democracy can be established and fully materialized this is what is known as ram rajya of his dreams naturally such an inspiring notion could not be confined to a particular country but in context of india especially he believed that people had great inclination towards application of non violence both in principle and in practice in a country like india which has unity in diversity where people have remained committed to the divine value of non violence in practice and where the system of self government lies deep rooted at the level of villages no form of government other than democracy can survive or work gandhi himself said that it is most likely that even in democracy there may be misuse of power the evils may creep in because it is man made not god made institution democracy is essential therefore in a country like india if we eliminate instances of misuse of democracy it can bring a real ram rajya or sincere efforts can be made to achieve that status in this direction gandhi ji put forward non violence and satyagraha as the means to make a start from india and set an example before the other nations of the world but to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor use of violent methods were strictly prohibited according to mahatma gandhi he relied on non violent methods for this purpose besides that he was against class war also to remove the disparity between the rich and the poor 
He put forward the principle of trusteeship, which was within scope of non-violence, but it would serve significantly and commendably not only in India, but also in the other nations of the world as a guideline. Gandhi reformed the concept of democracy by devising means to involve the people in power. Gandhi was against the concentration of power in the hands of the few. He was very particular about decentralization of power. Sen concentration of power means keeping the power in the hands of few who may misuse the power as and when according to their advantage. In democracy, all the people must have access to power. Then only power can be able to function within the purview of morality. Though outwardly power will be functioning through representatives of the people, in reality the people will be the sole authority to delegate the power. Democracy can only be saved through non-violence because democracy, so long as it is sustained by violence, cannot provide for all and protect the weak. My notion of democracy is that under it the weakest should have the same opportunity as the strongest. Democracy with non-violence are not just methods of struggle. They are ways of discovering truth, of allowing the truth of each individual to be registered in the whole. Extent of applicability of non-violence. The concept of non-violence was not to be confirmed for mere individual practice, but to be applied by the groups and the communities and the nations at large. Mahatma Gandhi had great dedication in trying to realize it. His faith helped him to discover new truths every day. He said ahimsa is the attribute of the soul and therefore to be prepared by everybody in all the affairs of life. If it cannot be executed in this spirit, it has no practical value. Are only the Indians suited for non-violent action? There are the critics who say non-violent action worked fine in India, but they do not think it would make sense to use it elsewhere. These critics believe that Indians are particularly suited to non-violent action because of the ethic of non-violent built into their religion and inhibited in their personality. This is very interesting myth for those who believe in it, certainly possess a very selective filter. Gandhi's philosophy of non-violence seems to have been consciously inspired firstly by the New Testament, the Sermon on the Mount. Only later he found similar ideas in Hindu scriptures. Therefore, the concept was not originated in India. But really, the easiest way to see the non-violent action is suitable outside India is simply to look at all the cases of non-violent action outside India. Unless your filter is pretty murky, you can hardly miss them. It certainly cannot be easy to ignore the example of Martin Luther King Jr. or to forget the solitary movement in Poland or to overlook the coup of Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines. It is said non-violent action can work only against easy enemies like the British and not against say the Soviets or Central American dictators or those villains or of last resort the Nazis. Here again filters are in place because non-violent action has been used with some success against all these. Gandhi as a revolutionary thinker. Every great thinker is a great revolutionary since each has a unique vision and original perspective which could change our thoughts in some way or the other. They are nevertheless a number of them who advocated for an effective change or on monumental scale. Gandhi was one such political thinker who always wanted to make sea change in society at a comprehensive scale. Every revolution has its symbols which are an index of its objectives. Gandhi gave us three symbols, community prayer, spinning wheel, the broomstick. The world is filled with disguising terrorism, violence, discrimination, etc. The politicians ignite religion-based war among people for money and power. So people are tired and bored of being patient and tolerant. It seems that Gandhian principles are slowly vanishing from human heart and tolerance power is decreasing gradually. Some of the political thinkers criticize non-violence as being ineffective, racist, status, patriarchal and strategically inferior to militant activism and deluded. Feminists also criticized it by claiming that non-violence looks a lot like passive and women have to be passive in the face of violence. That Gandhiji has always dreamt of a world where everyone is blessed with peaceful environment. Non-violence is a peaceful phenomena with utmost significance. It is a most innovative and inspiring solution to all kinds of problems and conflicts existing in the society. Being the victim of corruption, criminalism, dictatorship and power games are really in need to go back to Gandhi's conviction of non-violence and truth as a last resort to escape from these maladies. By enforcing non-violence, these nations will surely get rid of social, political, economic and religious troubles. Beyond doubt, it can be said that social doctrine of non-violence 
promulgated by Mahatma Gandhi has now become the key to provide sustenance to the new social and political order and it is not a thing of the past but holds a bright future if enforced in proper manner all over the world. We have seen that Gandhiji has always been an ardent supporter of the world which was based on peaceful environment. His notion of non-violence is much more important or we can say significant in today's world which is based on corruption, communalism, you know, hatred, violence and power games. It is certainly not a thing of the past, rather it is holding a bright future. It is holding a key to establish a new kind of political and social order. And the only important thing is that if it is implemented effectively in the world, 